Part three of response to Comptroller of Currency Audit of the U.S. Department of Energy, July 11th, 1980. Begin 2.47 p.m. Central Standard Time, part three. Before discussing the recent audit, it is important to contextualize it within other recent reports and audits currently available on the United States Department of State website. Reflected currently are many documents alleged to have been posted during the term of former United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton that reveal A. An effort to reform or refine the United States Department of State Pension and Benefit System. B. An effort to address factors concerning the permitting and development of the XL Keystone Pipeline. C. A number of responses regarding the United States Department of State's adherence to compliance with laws regarding countering human trafficking. D. Several items regarding cybersecurity focusing specifically on laptops available to members of the United States Department of State. And E. At least three reports on the performance of private contractors associated with, quote, protective detail, end quote, that fit into a two-in-one paradigm that is frequently evidenced in former United States President Barack Obama-era policy and has persisted to the current day. Later terms under other United States Secretaries of State reveal slightly different priorities. Has the United States Department of State indexed these matters ex post facto on its site to give a certain type of legacy to former United States Secretaries of State? That may be the case. But what is also apparent is that the reports and audits listed under United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton are distinctly different in terms of focus and priorities than those of the later United States Secretary of State John Kerry. Additionally, those that are listed as having been posted under United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton also involve reappropriation of factors that were considered prior to her assumption of duties as United States Secretary of State sometimes years before the request was made for their consideration. Those earlier considerations make more sense if one cross-references them with information on drawdowns from the United States Strategic Petroleum Reserve beginning in 2005, available through the United States Department of Energy site. The current audit is dated for October 31, 2019. On this day, United States President Donald Trump issued an executive order improving federal contractor operations by revoking Executive Order 13495. The Executive Order states, Executive Order 13495 of January 30, 2009, non-displacement of qualified workers under service contracts, which requires that successor federal contractors in certain circumstances offer a right of first refusal of employment to employees employed under the predecessor contract, is hereby revoked. Executive Order 13495 also states, Section 3, Enforcement. The Secretary shall terminate, effective immediately, any investigations or compliance actions based on Executive Order 13495. In October of 2018, an investigation was requested by the Naval Criminal Investigative Services after a public announcement concerning a recently settled case in New York City regarding the award of benefits to first responders to the 9-11 attacks. Among the concerns that were requested for investigation were the fact that the announcement correlated with a time frame outlined in a United States President Barack Obama era executive order specific to consideration of parental leave and its relationship to consideration of awards of benefits. This was specifically concerning in consideration of database classifications that use a parent child designation and the request was made in consideration that the announcement in the case may have been connected to the anniversary on the reference executive order dated for October 31st, 2016, and could be a manner in which benefits that were not ordinarily to be made available to federal or public sector workers were to be made available upon an ex post facto, recha ex post facto recharacterization. This appearance of a potential form of executive office kickback scheme is apparent in the current presentation of United States Department of State related data. That all investigations are to be terminated negates the fact that 
federal agencies, like other agencies, are required to report on open investigations within a certain time frame in order to meet the requirements of certain kinds of surety and insurance. Failure to report within a certain time frame registers as a default on the requirements of an agency, department, or other entity to adhere to certain legal requirements, including those connected to the federal appropriations process. By the time of the issue of the October 31st, 2019 executive order, the person requesting the investigation had already had report numbers that were provided with electronic account demarcators by the Naval Criminal Investigative Service going all the way back to September of 2017 that had yet to be closed or answered. This person is also the daughter of a career member of the United States Armed Forces and has other family members who serve both in the military and law enforcement. The United States Office of Management and Budget has a specific process associated with three-year reporting timelines. This needs to be considered in the context of another United States President Donald Trump era executive order, canceling a former executive order concerning three-year reporting periods regarding allegations of fraud for federal contractors. There was then a pause uh, beginning at 3.22 p.m. Central Standard Time when it came to the composition of this report.